just before we begin today's part, I must say, from now on, every level is an absolute banger. There's, they're just close to flawless, I would almost say. Very, very good levels from here on forth. Anyway, let's go on with the video. Now, here we have the first um, jetpack level, Rocket. Now, this is just a really great way to introduce the jetpack. It's an easier version of the... Of, out of the two, it, it's just a fun level. Um, haven't got much to say. Just, just a very good level. Anyway, on to the next level. Let's abuse the puppy. Animal abuse is good, kids. Just remember, it will give you a life. <laughs> I mean, you gotta love the fact that the um, Polo is sat in Wolfram 2 just waiting for you to pound him. <laughs> it's quite funny. Anyway, <laughs> I think this level looks great. Um, I love playing it. It's fun. I think it's a nice challenge. Actually, on the PS1, there's these two boxes on the ice. I need a bit, and they are an absolute pain to get for some reason. <laughs> Very frustrating, but it's fairly easy on um, this game, this level. So, well, on the insane trilogy, so there. Yeah. Anyway, on to the next level. Now, these next two levels are so similar. I found it pretty hard to separate them, but. We're going to start off with Island 1's final level, Native Fortress. Now, I, I, this is probably the first difficult level in the game, like the, not 100% complete, but just to get through the level. It, it, up to this point, I think the game's fairly easy. I, I, I rarely die like, during the levels, so the challenge up is definitely appreciated. Now, in this level in particular, I love the red gem path because you, you like literally are standing on clouds, like in the red... And it's quite cool seeing like the other islands in the distance. I think that's a nice touch. Now, uh, how how do I think about this hero? I'll be honest. I'm not the the music doesn't do it for me. It's not my favourite in the series. It's uh, but I do like um, the idea of going through the native villages, kind of this ruining their day, annoying them. <laughs> they obviously don't like Crash at all, and <laughs> we're just ruining their day. Anyway, on to the next level and now we have island 2's final level now both of these marathon levels at the end of these islands respectively do feel very fitting for a final uh, level on the island I put this level just ahead of um, the other one though because I just like the theme a little better I, I think honestly, graphically, th these are some of the most gorgeous levels in the entire series. And I am including the PS1 version in that as well. I think they hold up to this day. I think these levels are also really fun to play from a platforming standpoint. It's just, you get knocked off by the pushies or, you know, you've got platforms that fall under you. It's just great level design. Anyway, I think it's time to go out. Ah, oh, same with Crash 1. Now we have the first light level from Crash 1. Now, yes, this is a very simple level to platform. Like, the jumps are all about the same distance. Um, but it, it, maybe it is a bit too easy for where it is in the game, but I just love the fact you're going through the dark hallways like in a nighttime setting. I mean, who the hell builds a castle with hallways like this? Uh, anyway, <laughs> a bit yeah, weird, but. But yeah, I, why didn't they just keep Aku like this, like as the light source? It makes more sense than this having this weird night fly thing flying around you. Anyway, up, on to the next level. Now back to Quest 2 with the level Hangar 8. This level is a really nice bounce. After you just played the snow level, you just want a more bouncy level, and this level fits that build perfectly. 
Now uh, the blue gem path in this level is fantastic. I, I really enjoyed the like slight step up in challenge from quite an easy level beforehand. Now uh, I also do like the time challenge in this level. Um, it's a good indicator for uh, for a future gem, even if it um, is a bit less with more if it's more redundant now than it used to be due to the addition of the relics. But this level is a fantastic walk from one level, and I'm glad it's in the game. Anyway, on to the next level. And now we have the first um, Night Arabian level. Definitely the better out of the two Night themes. Anyway, I really like the addition of the new enemies, the ones that throw the flame bombs. I always thought they were women when I was younger for some reason, not the lab assistants. I have absolutely no reason why. I don't know if they're meant to look like women maybe, but <laughs> anyway. I, I also like the look of the night theme. Like the, I like the the feather down below. It's really warm. It feels like it's going to be nice and cosy down there. Um, the thing is, I'm not the keenest on the colour gem route. I, I'm not sure if how, how I like the idea of a death fruit having a colour gem, it, it's just not the most creative. But other than that, it is a fun level. Anyway, on to the next level. And now we have the final ruin level, Ruin Nation. Now this level has really clever d d level design, which is a throwback to the previous level, but there's a few twists in there. It makes the level feel more ruined because there's like nitro boxes instead. You know, the level's, yeah, more ruined as I said. The green path in this level is also really good. I, I like the fact the monkeys are, um, the ace throw the, the logs in different areas. I like that. I refuse. Now, maybe my only critique is I think there should be more apes in the base level. I mean, only having one at the end and it's like really easy is kind of a little bit redundant. But um, anyway, I will say the death music in um, this level is amazing. Just have a listen. I just love that music. Uh, you can hear the logs. It really gets the blood pumping. Well done, Joss Mansell, for making all the music for the oh. original three games. Beautiful music. Anyway, on to the next level. Now we have the first pure level and the best one. Orient Express. Now, do what I love about these levels, I mean, I just love the music. I love the fact we're riding on the Great Wall of China. It's great. The thing is, why? Maybe the reason why this is probably my least favourite, I don't want to say least favourite, I do really like it. It's more like, let's say third favourite. Why this is my third favourite is, is I, I don't know, is, is it just me? Pure <laughs> space speed, this is so slow. So like. I know that you've got the speed, you know, you can just speed up with her, but I kind of wish it, he felt a bit faster with his base speed. As, other than that, I, do I, like, I like the fact that each game, the widened sections, have different gameplay. So I really respect that from all three. Anyway, onto the climb. Oh, I jumped too early. Now, here we have the original level, the original Stormy Ascent, Slippery Climb. Now, maybe it's Big Brother has stolen a bit of thunder from this level, like 
This level probably would have been a, a bit higher up my list if it, if, if it wasn't for Stormy Ascent. But damn, this is still a good level. And you still have to complete this level without dying to get the Red Gem. So it's still definitely a challenge. Now, honestly, I still think the PS1 version is the definitive version. Because not only does it... I feel it looks better on the PS1, but oh, the, the music as well is better. Here, have a listen. I just felt a more creepy vibe from the uh, original soundtrack to the new one. <laughs> 